Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the Flex XFE 7-15-150, aka the finisher. So it came to this. Got there all too fast. All you can hope for. Turn right on into dust. My sweet luck. Where I'm about Won't you help me Get my feet Back on the ground My sweet Lord Where I'm about Won't you help me Get my feet back on the ground welcome back to the channel guys today we are reviewing the new offering flex power tools the german made flex xfe 7-15150 also known as the finisher so first up the basics of the tool guys this is a free spinning dual action polisher with a 15 millimeter throw so what that means is with a dual action polisher is you get two forms of movement. You get the main rotation or orbit or oscillation from the rotation of the main axle and then you get the spin from the plate which is mounted in the free spinning bearing offset from the centre of that axle. So the reason these dual action polishers have become very popular with professional detail is, that, is they make it easier to get consistent and kind of more guaranteed results. With rotary polishers as we talked about on this channel even though they have tons of capability, tons of correction capability, and the ability to finish down paintwork beautifully, there are more risks around using those polishers incorrectly. And, and applying too much kind of friction on one particular area that you're working. And friction generates heat, heat expands your clear coat, and that can lead to kind of buffer trails which can appear in the paintwork later on after you finish the job. The dual action polisher effectively spreads the working load over a bigger footprint and it's not working that footprint in the same manner as just a fixed rotation rotary. So like I say, the risks and the heat generated are reduced and the results are more consistent. The XFE 7-15150 is available in the UK from Clean and Shiny. A link for the product will be in the description. The price for the tool is £310 or £309.99. 99 pence. The price on that tool when I was shooting that video and when I checked the other prices is considerably cheaper than any other offering that I could find and cheaper by quite some way. So the, the link I'm providing you is a place where you can get the tool for a very good price. The tool comes with a 125mm Velcro flexible backing plate which supports your most standard size, size of pads, typically the 5.5 inch pads. And in this video I was using the tool with the Chemical Guys Hexlogic range of pads which I'll provide a link for in the description of where you can go and buy those. The tool weighs 2.4 kilograms, it comes with a cable length of 4 meters and has an operating speed of 3000 to 9000 OPMs which is orbits per minute or oscillations per minute. The tool also supports a flex specific 150 millimeter Velcro flexible backing plates so you have a bit of variance on the size of the pads that you can use. The tool uses a 710 watt input and a 410 watt output motor with plenty of torque to deliver you all the power you need to operate this tool effectively. The tool features a microprocessor controller inside which gives you some additional electronic features that you don't find available on all tools. Namely an overheating sensor so the tool is able to cut itself off if it detects it's overheating. Um, a power safety cut off so if you lose your power while you're operating the machine. Um, and the power comes back on, the, ma the machine will not automatically restart, which could lead to some potential problems. The tool also features a constant speed tachometer, so it's able to measure and monitor the tool and, and maintain that speed regardless of how you're operating the tool, which is a good feature for kind of ensuring that the machine is actually functioning at the rate you want it to, rather than kind of varying with the amount of pressure you're using. 
as with all flex tools, a lot of thought has gone into the ergonomics and the design of the tool, so it's easy to hold, it's easy to operate. You do not need to put a bale handle on this or a stick handle. It works fine with the integrated bale on the end, which is mounted in rubber to help reduce vibration and help you handle the tool properly so it doesn't slip out your hands. The tool also features a soft start control mechanism and variable speed control on the trigger, so you can alter the amount of power going to the machine depending on how hard you press the trigger. The most important thing about why these 15mm throw or even the 21mm throws are becoming the kind of the standard, if you like, as, as what a guy who's into detailing or professional will use is the correctional capability of them over the free spinning um, eight millimeter throw dual action polishers, which used to be kind of the entry point if we wind the clock back about 10 years. In practical terms, when I've got to do compounding, there's, there's two scenarios I would like to use and a third scenario which I try to avoid like the plague, okay? And this is just me. But these scenarios are, if the swell damage is, is moderate and light, I want to get all of my compounding or cutting done in one set. So in other words, if I lay my product down, I work it and I rub off the, the product and my damage is being corrected and the clear coat's been lowered to a good level where I'm happy with the amount of defects that have been removed, okay? And then after that, I'll go ahead and do the second phase, which is the refinement, the, the, the fine polishing phase. And that is the best kind of result you could ever have, one set of compounding, and one set of polishing, okay? Or you could do another set if you really want to add that kind of refinement. But the main point being, one set of compounding. Now with medium to heavy swirl damage, typically two sets are required to take that clear coat down to a level where you've got a satisfactory amount of the defects out of the paintwork, okay? There's always gonna be that inspection side after you've done your compounding to see if you've got enough of those swirls out. But most times when I'm machine polishing cars, um, I want to get all of that compounding done within two sets. If I have to start doing three sets, it becomes very, very time consuming. Um, and with these tools, the one thing I'm looking for them to deliver is really to be able to do quite a good level of correction within two sets. So next up, what do I think of the tool from actually using it? So we've done a, a full finishing polish on my 135 because it didn't need compounding. And then we've got the test panel, our, our test wing, and I've installed quite heavy swirl damage, which I'll overlay over the top of this. You know, I got some, some grit and dirt in my hands and went over that panel and really spiraled it up with the type of fresh, deep scratches that you will see that cause that kind of, those swirl marks in paintwork. And that was on one section of the wing. On the other section, I rubbed it down with P2500 to see how the machine would cope with cutting out your kind of standard um, wet sanding marks. Okay, so I'll be lying to you if I said I wasn't gonna be disappointed if this tool had taken three sets to do the compounding phase of taking that swirl damage out of the test panel. The tool was able to take out all of the scratch damage on that panel, or all that I could see, and that's the, that's the standard I work to. If there's stuff there that I can't see, it doesn't worry me too much, but not 80%, not 90%, not even 95%, it took out all of the scratch damage within two sets. That is the most important thing, and that was an important benchmark for me in this test. So the tool has passed being able to do that medium to heavy scratch correction and removing sanding marks all within two sets. So the next box I needed to tick was overheating. So this tool was a year late to market. I originally, I approached Flex Power Tools UK about a year ago when I started the channel up to review this tool and it was delayed and I reviewed some of their other tools. So you can see reviews of the Flex P14-1 and 2 and the Compact Rotary, the P8-4 on this channel, little plug for you there. Um, but yeah, this tool wasn't available and I've been watching for the kind of developments of it and it kind of came out in America first and I noticed some early pictures of it where the vents on here were opened up. Now, the first thing that anyone who's been machine polishing a while will notice when they buy this tool is that the business end of the tool, i.e. The, the bit that kind of does all the work, if you like, the plate system and the air cooling is different to anything I've seen. So all of the vents on the main housing above the plate are closed off. 
So all of the airflow that's being drawn in through the back of the tool over the motor and then down is coming out through the side of the plates and the centre hole underneath the plates. So as well as the quite unique airflow that's on this system with no vent holes in, in the housing. Um, the other thing I noticed which has implications to, to heating and cooling is, um, is the speed that the machine operates on. So the OPM rate of this machine, which is 3,000 on its slowest, 3,000 orbits per minute, up to 9,000 orbits per minute, is kind of significantly faster. It's a faster range than most of its competitors, which typically start at around 2,000 and go up to 5,000. Those particular things made me wonder, and this, this is how sad I am, what I, what I sort of think about when I'm, when I'm preparing to do these reviews. So it made me wonder if it was delayed because of overheating issues. So I really wanted to pay close attention to this review and testing the machine to see if I could make it overheat without doing anything unusual as well. You don't want to sort of like sit on top of the tool and have it running on full whack where you're you know, doing stupid things, but seeing if there was any ability for the tool to overheat within normal operation. And the best way to test that I find with these machines is to operate them on their slowest speed. Because typically when they're on their slowest speed, the fans that are in there and connected to the drive system are turning at the lowest rate and you, the machine will get at its hottest. When you're running them higher, the airflow rate improves and you get a more consistent cooling, a bit, a bit like with your old cars when you, you know, they're all right driving down the motorway but as soon as you stopped and idled at the traffic lights, you were, you were in trouble. So I spent a little bit of time with this when I was doing a full polish, just a finishing polish on the 135 because it doesn't need correcting of running that tool for quite long periods on its lowest setting, just seeing if I could notice or feel any increase in temperature around the housing here for, for quite long sets of like three or four minutes and then going again and going again at this lowest speed and seeing basically if I could cause any heating issues. I couldn't, okay? This does start to feel warm, but not anywhere near what you describe as hot. And um, if you've used the Flex, the Flex 3401 here, it's big brother behind it, which has been around for years and has the metal housing, that was quite prone to getting quite, quite toasty, that machine, when you use it. Now the third box that I really needed to tip, guys, that's very important with these free spinning dual action polishers, is how the plate is affected by the machine not being level. So in other words, when you're, when you're using this to polish areas which are not nice and flat and you know you've got the machine level or where you're edging and you might be just put applying a little bit of lean or where you're going over little kind of verges or where you're doing convex bits all the bits that that test and push the plate slightly against the backing now that's an important thing because one of the things you see a lot with this this tool's main rival the rupes lhr 15 es Mark II, Jesus, I managed to pull that out of the old brain. Um, now one thing you see a lot with that tool is people making modifications to the tool to get around the problem of slowdown of the plates. And there's a modification I mentioned that, that, that's done by um, an American detailer where you, you put a bearing, you, you put a special cut bearing underneath which fits the plate system to lift it away from the housing a, a little bit. Well, I've even seen people, or owners of these, cut the housing back to create a bigger gap. Um, now, Rupes, I think, recommend you just grease the uh, polyurethane, it's like a plastic backing plate, to allow it to spin better. But still with the Rupes, there is always that question mark about how it, how it performs when you're not level. And for me, I, I commented it on the video that I think if you're using the tool you know, if you're not a polish, if you're not a guy that likes to apply a lot of pressure when you're using these DAs and really force them into the, the kind of clear cut, I know that sounds a bit brutal, but some guys do like to do that. Um, I don't, you know, the machine weight is enough for me. I didn't think it was a major problem on the, um, on the Rupes, although you can notice the slowdown. You can notice the slowdown on this as well when you lean with it or you're doing those convex concave areas. But I just felt it wasn't slowing down quite as much. And the, the way this plate system, and it's, it's totally unique, I've not seen anything like this plate system on any other machine. The way it interfaces with the, the rigid plastic housing, so it's different, is really, really sturdy, okay? And I think it's harder for this plate to actually kind of rub 
and generate friction from the plate against the housing. So I think the machine copes better with that. One other factor is this does have a slightly smaller plate on it, which will work in its favor. The Rupes I was using on a 150 millimeter plate. So the bigger the plate, the more kind of pressure you're gonna be able to apply as the plate's bigger. But in my, mind's, in my mind, this deals with not being used on a level surface slightly better than the um, Rupes LHR 15ES Mark II. So it ticked the box for me in how this machine copes with being used on non-flat surfaces, okay, which is the weakness of a long throw DA, okay. So the fourth box I wanted to tick, and most of them get this right, all three 15 millimeter throw offerings that I've looked at, and we're gonna, we're gonna compare them in a minute on the board. They all do well in this. That is the general ergonomics of the tool, okay. I mean, you can look at it, you can tell it's nice, can't you? But it just fits, it fits your hand so nicely the way they've done it. And then you just balance the tool really easily by put, kind of propping your hand on top of it, or even you can even get your hand under it for when you're doing kind of the side. So you've got complete control and there's no, no flaws around the ergonomics of the tool that I can find. And I do like the rubber, the rubber kind of grip at the end. That's lovely. It's not gonna slip out of your hand, okay? As, as with all of them, the ergonomics are good on, on most of the offerings of these tools. So that's fine. The next box I need to tick, guys, is around noise and vibration. Okay, Flex Advisor tool kicks out around about 91 decimals, which is pretty standard, but it's also it's quite loud, and those are at the maximum operating speed where the tool's really, the motor's really going full throttle, okay? The noise level for me is not a problem at all. It's not a, it's no more noticeably noisy than the uh, the Rupes or the um, or the uh, Chinese, you know, DAD6 Pro Plus named offering. Not that I can tell anyway. In fact, it's so quiet, I, I wouldn't particularly need to put ear defenders on for this. I've told you I'm very bad at all that stuff. I never glove up, I never wear goggles, I never put the ear defenders on. You know, I should do with these big old lug nuts. They pick up every, any, any little vibration, but the noise is fine. Now vibration, one thing I will say, when you crank this machine up to its full speed, and I've mentioned that its operating range is, is a, a higher scale than most of its competitors. When you crank it up to full speed, the vibration levels start to become noticeable. And I'll, I'll, just, I'll just do it while, while, while you're on camera. Now what I'd say about this vibration is, you are running at 9,000 orbits, orbits per minute versus what its rival's maximum were, which was about 5,000 orbits per minute. And for me, that, that maximum rate of 9,000 is higher than I'm used to working with, okay? And I'm not sure why it goes that high. Um, it's not a major problem to have that capability in there, but it, like I say, it's different to what everyone else is doing. You need to be aware of it. And what I'd say is at speed three, you are correcting at 5,400 orbits per minute, which is the maximum of the other tools that I've used before. And that seems to be a really good sort of benchmark for me. And I didn't really feel I was getting that much benefits from going up to sort of seven or 8,000 or even 9,000. Now at 3,000, uh, sorry, at speed three, which is 5,400 orbits per minute, the vibration levels are, are, are a lot less. And I know it's very difficult when you're watching this video to try and gauge that, but I can tell you, at top speed, you can feel the vibration a lot, a little bit more. And I, I took a break when I was using it before, and I went outside, and I've been using it on top whack, and I could feel my hands shaking a little bit, or, or I knew I'd been operating a tool that was, was kicking out some vibration. So it's one thing to consider. It is not a problem, and like I say, you don't need to use this tool, in my opinion. And that is an opinion that's only based on using it for a day, so... You know, if I had it for a year, it might be, I might have a better view on it. But in my opinion, from what I've seen so far, you don't need to crank this tool up to the top speed. And the mid order speed range between three and four seem more than capable of delivering the correction levels that you need. And they're the correction, and they're, they're the speeds that I use to, to do the correction tests on the, um, on the wing panel. And it performed fine at those speeds, which like I say, are the, are the, those speeds, the mid range of this is the maximum speeds of those other tools. So that's something to consider. 
Okay guys, so there's gonna be a burning question that I, if I don't answer it in this video, I'm gonna get asked it repeatedly. So I need to cover it to save my fingers on the keyboards. Um, now you have three main offerings of this 15 millimeter throw DA, and I featured them all on this channel. So there's individual reviews if you go and search a channel for all three of the offerings. The first offering is the Chinese made tool that's known as the DAS6 Pro Plus, okay? Go and have a watch of the review of that. The second offering is the Rupes um, LHR15 ES Mark II. We've done a review of that as well. And the third offering is the Flex XFE7-15-150, which we're reviewing now. And what I want to do is compare those three tools and ultimately give you an opinion on which one I would have. Okay guys, so here we have a head-to-head -head comparison of three offerings that we're looking to take and we're going to draw some comparisons between some of these things. So first up, price and budget, okay? So the DAS 6 Pro, you know, smashes this one. It's priced at £150. If you watch the review I did, you can see where you can go and get that tool for £150, which is the best price in the UK. Um, you know, it's phenomenal value. And some people, you know, they'll approach me and say, look, I have only got a budget of 150 to 170. So I can't re recommend them at all they can't af afford. So that kind, of takes care of, that kind of takes care of itself. And the essential thing, you know, doing any comparison of these three tools is they all, they all deliver, okay? They all throw that plate around, you know, on a 15 mil free spinning offset bearing, if you like, and they will all, you know, correct well and finish down well. They all deliver on that. It's the fine details of what are gonna verge you to pick one over the other. And that's what we're covering, so this is important. DAS 6 Pro wins on price. The Flex um, comes second at 310 pounds from Clean and Shiny, which is a really good price, with the Rupees coming, you know, third with uh, 350 pounds. So it's the most expensive. Next thing, the weight of the tools, okay? So in last place is the DAS 6 Pro Plus at 2.8 kilos. In second place, the Flex. Uh, XFE7, it's 2.4 kilos, and then the Roops is the lightest of all three machines at 2.2 kilograms. The difference there between the best and the worst isn't considerable, 400 grams or um, 0.4 kilograms, but you know, it's um, credit where credit's due, that is the lightest of all three of them. Okay, okay, so next up is the OPM range, guys, the oscillations per minute. So the Flex has the widest range with the highest kind of operating speed and the highest operating low speed, which isn't actually an advantage. So take these, in this column, I wouldn't pay too much attention to first, second, and third, but just more be aware of what that range is offering. The Rupes has a slightly lower, high, uh, slightly lower start speed at 2.4 thousand um, orbits per minute. Um, but it doesn't go anywhere near as fast. So up to 5.3. It's worth stating that it still corrects well at that range and Rupes will have developed it, you know, at this range for a reason. And this stands out to me as being more unusual than, than this. So, and like I say, up at the 9K range, you, you do start to get quite a large vibration. But the thing is, you don't need to operate the tool at that speed if you don't want to. But for someone starting out, all this stuff about how, how fast the, the machine's operating, what it's gonna give you at those different speeds, um, might not be something they're so familiar with. So that's why we're discussing it. It's important to go into the details. And this machine, 1.8 to 4.8K. Okay, so next up, cable length. The DAS6 Pro, six meters. The Flex XFE, seven, four meters. And the Rupes, 3.2. Um, the reality is you're gonna be either using extension leads on all of these, or modifying these cable lengths um because because none of them are really long enough to do to get around the entire car which is what you want so i thought i'd put it up there though because it is the six meter one is, is 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 quite a good good length of cable okay vibration and noise issues so i think and i don't have all these tools in front of me to fire them up and really really compare them but going on memory i would say that the roops is probably the best overall the smoothest overall um, it's quite, it's, it's very, a little bit subjective, this. Um, the, the flex, the flex up here was only really bad when you started cranking it up to those high speeds. You know, when you get above sort of seven and a half thousand, you really do feel the vibration. Um, but still, it's still there. So, you know, just bear in mind what I'm saying against these. And 
you know, some of these columns aren't, aren't critical. Okay guys, finally features. We put the flex in first place here with the most amount of features. The soft start, this, the taco speed maintenance, the, um, the over temperature protection, which I think is unique, and the power safety, so it doesn't start up again after a power cut. The, the Rupes features some of those features, but not all of them. I believe it has the soft, the soft start and the uh, taco speed control. The DAS 6 Pro Plus has the least of these electron, electronic features out of all of the tools. Okay guys, one other thing that I didn't do a column for, it's the old Bodget and Scarpa Productions. I'm not rubbing it off and doing it all again, but build quality. So I'll just pop it in there. Build quality. Quality. So the DAS 6 Pro, even, even though it comes last, the build quality on it is good, okay? It, it looks very similar to the Flex, okay? But the Flex is German made. Um, but I, the internals on the DAS 6 Pro I think are a little bit cheaper. The gearing and some of those kind of metal cog components I don't think are quite as, you know, well engineered as the Flex or the, the Rupes. Um, so that would come last, but you know, the quality of this machine for the price is very, very good. So don't think of this as a failure. It's just outdone by the kind of premium ones. Um, next up, the Rupes, okay, the build quality on that is lovely. It's smooth. It's a nice tool, low vibration, really nice to work with this tool. I can see, I understand why they're popular and I really like it. The flex edges it for me around the engineering that they've done, because I'm just trying to do this to the camera. Where is it there? The, the engineering of this plate system, I think is superior. So I would give, and, and all the rest of the features, you know, it's hard to separate them, the flex and the Rupes around, you know, around the chassis and all the, you know, the rubber components and all that. They're both fantastic on that. But like I say, the plate system, I think is, is better engineered on this particular tool. So there we have our head to head comparisons. Okay guys, so finally recommendations based on our comparisons. The number one important thing that you need to understand if you've not used a lot of machine polishers before is that the fundamentals of all three tools are there. They all throw that free spinning plate that's offset on the main axle around and they all do it well. And because they do that, that long throw if you like, they have a good balance on how, how aggressive they are with correcting without being too aggressive or without introducing too much heat so you don't get any chance of holograms and all that sales stuff that we talked about. It's all true by the way. These aren't popular because people are just trying to punt out something else. They deliver results. That's really important. And all three tools will deliver you results. Who should be buying what? Because we've all got different angles and you know, depending on what we do. First of all, if you have a budget, and that budget is around about 150 pounds and you can't stretch much beyond that, then you can't, you can't those, t those other tools, the word I'm looking for is they're over budget for you. So that takes care of itself. And if you're not doing a lot of machine polishing, you know, you're doing it once, the DAS 6 Pro Plus that I reviewed in another video, um, you know, will deliver you results. What are the downsides? Okay, it's missing a lot of the electronic controls that you have with the Flex and the Rupes, um, you know, the soft start, all that sort of thing, the, protect, the overheat protection. It's a little bit more clunky, okay? You know, but, but not much. Once you've got it going and you've got the trigger lock on, like I say, it will still deliver your results. So it's a solid recommendation, it really is. Next up, kind of professional detailers, or for someone who's not professional, but is doing, you know, more machine polishing than just kind of one car a year, um, you know, a, a full-on, full-blooded hobbyist, if you like, that does a fair bit of this, or, or even a guy that's doing it once a year, but just that the extra difference in price, you know, they've got a higher budget, so the extra 150 pounds isn't a, isn't a problem. So what is the best, in other words, best for the professional, and best with someone without any budget constraints? And it's gonna be a pick, it's gonna be a face-off, isn't it, between the Rupes and the Flex. And my answer, guys, because this wouldn't be a fair review if I sat on the fence, if I had to pick which one of these tool, tools I was taking, and it's with all three as well, I would take the Flex XFE 7-15-150. Why? Okay, it comes out of the box with the 125mm backing plate in the UK. Um, for me, that is the only plate I would use on this machine. I wouldn't be looking to up, up, up it to the 150 mil plate and use the six inch pads, okay? 
the machine is much more user friendly with those five and a half inch pads. It's just a little bit of, it's a little bit of kind of radius or diameter, but it makes a big difference. So much more usable on 125 mil plates for me. Um, and unless you've got a specific requirement of doing like large areas, you know, specific detailing requirement, I wouldn't recommend you go and put the 150 mil plate on there. You don't need it. So out of the box, it's ready to go, the Flex. The second thing is I think the engineering on the plate system on this Flex is slightly superior to the, to the Rupes. Um, they still perform well and the Rupes is always going to be popular and I would have one in, you know, I wouldn't lose sleep if I bought that and I didn't have the Flex. But I, I think the engineering of this plate system is better for me and that that is something I've been impressed with and it's the thing that caught my eye when I first looked at it because I was thinking what the hell is that I've not seen anything like that before but it works and it's really rigid and it doesn't seem to rub you know it's almost designed to interface with each other and that seems to work well third thing the flex is 40 quid cheaper which is a percentage I'm not sure what it is but it's kind of significant with that 40 quid I could go and get myself a fair few pads and some products as well so it's cheaper what are the downsides of the Flex, if any? Well, the only thing I've been able to pick up on is the fact that it has a higher operating range, and when you crank it right up to the top range, the vibration levels start to feel borderline intrusive. But the solution to that is so easy. You can just operate it on the, on the, on the setting that you feel comfortable with. But from a wider picture point of view, some people are not going to be watching this video when, when they buy it and they're just going to crank this thing up right the way up to the top and probably be happily using it for years on top speed with that quite sort of heightened level of vibration if you like. So, you know, it wouldn't, if, if, if Flex had set the top speed to say 7,500 OPMs, um, I think it would have been fine at that speed and still a lot higher than the other offerings. So I wasn't sure about that. but. Like I say, it's a tiny negative because I'll just consider it when I'm using the tool and run it at the speeds that I need to run it at to achieve what I need to achieve. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching this review of the Flex XFE 7-15150 from the Forensics Detailing channel. As always, I'd really like to know your opinion. If there's anyone out there that has this tool and has bought it and been using it, it's hot off the press at the moment I filmed this video, so that's why I'm hoping the video is going to be useful to people. But what are your thoughts on it? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? What do you prefer potentially about the Rupes system? Are you a Rupes guy or a Flex guy? You know, some people are one or the other. I, I, I have no loyalty. I'll use whatever I think is best. Like I say, I've tried to really review this fairly. The key thing I want to get across is that all three of these tools are pretty fantastic. The Flex edges it for me for some very, very small reasons, but as we always say, the devil is in the detail with all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'd also like to say a big thank you for Clean and Shiny for loaning me this tool to do this review. The link of where you can go and buy it from Clean and Shiny is in the description. And as I've said, their price is the best that I can find at the time when I'm shooting this video. That's it from me guys. Stay tuned to the Forensics Detailing channel for more great detailing content. Or maybe not so great, but more detailing content will do. Alright guys, take it easy.